ladies and gentlemen, thanks to attend 2021 APEC China Excipient Regulatory Communication Conference. This is Cici Wang, APEC China Chair. I take this opportunity to introduce APEC Federation, APEC China, and this series of sessions. APEC Federation is composed of five independent regional industrial associations located in US, Europe, Japan, China, and India. Creation of more regional affiliations is under consideration. APEC Federation is a global umbrella organization of the regional associations for promoting the quality and safety of pharmaceutical excipients. We recognize the drug market is global, including excipient sourcing. The global supply chain safety communication platform is very important. APEC is a unique organization and covers the makers, distributors, and users of excipients. We share the same quality and safety vision and represent one voice on common global excipient issues. It is better to monitor regulatory development from multiple perspectives and geographies. APEC China is one of five independent regional industry associations in APEC Federation. And APEC China is a non-profit association represented makers, users, and distributors of pharmaceutical excipients in China. Our vision is better promote mutual understanding in China and the broad of regulation and the quality and safety of pharmaceutical excipients, enhance cooperation and exchange among industry players, provide proposal suggestions on related regulatory requirements to authorities and develop a series of technical guidelines and the standards to improve quality, standards, and the safety of excipients. Drug safety is very uh, significantly important in China. China drug policy is focused on four stricter guidelines on drug, on drug safety, including the stricter standards, the stricter supervision, the stricter punishment and the stricter accountability to ensure the drug quality and to protect public health. APEC China hopes to establish the communication bridge to better introduce China regulatory management, compliance requirements, and regula regulation development for better protecting patients through global partnerships in the innovation and safe play, supply of pharmaceutical recipients. APEC China Excipients Regulatory Communication Conference will focus on three um, module sharing and how below hot topic. The first topic is focused on excipient regulatory landscape in China. Speaker is Julia Zhu, our director of APEC China. She is a senior RA manager from Kerry, uh, China. Second topic is full overview of China, uh, China pharmaceutical excipient GMP. Speaker is Xuan Gao, our chair for quality subcommittee. She is a quality and regulatory manager from Rao Farm. The third topic is introduction to the excipient section of the China Pharmacopoeia 2020. Speaker is Eileen Song. Uh, she is our director of APEC China, and she's senior product regulatory expert from Dow China. The fourth topic is excipient changes management in China DMF framework and its technical requirements. Speaker Martin Tao, our director of APEC China. He is our manager from IFF. Last topic uh, is related uh, for practice on registration of pharmaceutical excipients in China. 
speaker of Florence Xu. She is our director of IPAC China, also is the chair of a regulatory affairs subcommittee. She is from Kalakong, China. Welcome to attend 2021 IPAC China Exhibit Regulatory Communication Conference. If you have any questions, welcome to contact IPAC China for further discussion. Thanks for your attention. Let's begin. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Zhu from Carry China. I'm a senior RE manager with Carry's Applied Health and Nutrition and responsible for the products manufactured and marketed in line with appropriate legislations across North Asia. Currently, I'm the board member of APEC China. Appreciate ACPHI establishing this platform for pharma industry. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to communicate with the industry about exhibiting the regulatory landscape in China. In today's globalization, China is currently one of the most promising pharmaceutical markets and stand and comply with the regulatory requirements in the countries in which a drug will be manufactured or sold is quite important. So today, I will go through from aspects of evolution of existing regulations in China and understand the requirements of current regulations and describe the responsibility of exhibit manufacturer and user respectively. Hopefully you can have a brief understanding about exhibit regulatory framework in China after today's presentation. And please stay tuned for the upcoming hot topics about exhibits such as GMP, China Farm Copia, change management, and practice on China DMF filing. Maybe as you know, China drug product management include, including API, exhibit and primary packaging materials and containers have entered a reform period over the past decade. The most recent regulations have already significantly increased regulatory efficiency and transparency. Exhibiting spectral review together with the drug products better protects intellectual property, property of manufacturer and streamline market approval process. Next, let's move on to the first part of today's presentation to go through the most important milestones milestones in the revolution of exhibiting regulations in China to understand the history of the regulatory system for pharmaceutical exhibits. After the reform in recent years, the man management of pharmaceutical exhibits has been changed from the original administrative lessening to the current bundling review together with drug product. As shown in the figure, I will explain the different stages of the exhibit the manufact uh, manuf ma management reform according to the change track of the regulatory concept, including licensing management. We also call it as registration or ADL, and explanation of filing management. And the bundling submission stage when the initial implementation of the battling review and the current stage of the separated submission for exhibits and battling review together with the drug product. Okay, let's go in detail and start from registration system of exhibit. For a long time, especially before uh, 2016, China has been implementing administrative licensing for excipients, which means the excipients need registration and the manufacturer need production licensing. Excipients came into regulatory focus in China in 2001, when uh, the pharmaceutical administration law stipulated that 
uh, excipients used for pharmaceutical production should meet the requirements for medical use. In 2005, China FDA proposed that excipients registration be done according to the similar process as APIs. This include a standalone review by the CDE for import, uh, import and novel excipients and by the local FDA for excipients under the China firm copier. In 2008, China FDA began to investigate within industry organizations and explore the management of system for exhibit filing. The, ref the reforms were triggered by a substantial backlog in drug review. China's pharmacopoeia industry had developed rapidly in the interim, resulting in a broad range of new and generic drug applications. However, the approval process uh, couldn't keep pace with this rapid, rapid development. In 2015, the State Council initiated substantial reforms uh, aiming at establishing a more transparent and more efficient process for drug approval and as a result, also for excipient. But the review for excipients was uh, first introduced into China from such a high administrative level. In 2016, with the implementation of announcement number 134 and number 145, bonding review process for excipients came into effect. Undoubtedly, as the key milestone, the administration for excipient changed from separate approval to badly review with drug application. However, the process at, the, at that time is a little bit different from the existing one, which required battling submission together with drug product. As of November 2017, according to Trend FDA announcement number 156, all pharmaceutical excipients used in both domestic produced drug products and imported drug products would fall into the administration of family review. The excipient manufacturer or owners should submit their dossier to the CDE. After a successful completeness strike, a filing number is uh, published on the CDE website. Then the excipient applicant can issue a letter of authorization to its customer for their respective drug registration application. In 2019, the classification of excipients as uh, listed in the China pharmacopoeia was introduced. It is also a consideration based on risk. Since then, this classification has served as the basis for the documents requirements for exhibiting dossier filing. Okay, that's a basic introduction of evolution of exhibiting regulation in China. Let's move on to next part to understand the requirements of current regulations. We can see the chart on the left showed the current regulatory framework for exhibiting. It's sorted according to the force of law. The top level is drug administrative law, then to regulations, announcements, and technical guidelines with descending order. Let's brief from the new released drug and administration law. On December the 1st, 2019, the new released drug administration law was effective. This law aims at enhancing drug safety and improving public health. It includes most of the previous reform outcomes, such as the uh, China Marketing Authorities and Holder System and the Bentley Review Regulation relevant for APIs, exhibits, and primary packaging materials. Exhibit shall comply with medical requirements and the relevant requirements of GMP. 
Okay, what does this medical requirements mean? There is an explanation in the announcement of number 56, which means the quality, safety, and functions thereof should meet the requirement of the drug product. For drug manufacturing, MAH should conduct audit on the suppliers of excipients and MAH should perform audit to ensure that the excipient meet the specified requirements mentioned above, above. Okay, let's move on to the next level. The relevant regulations issued by China FDA under the legal framework of new, uh, new released drug administration law, the revised regulation on drug registration and manufacturing administration were released and came into force since last July. The process of Bentley review system has been written into this new released drug registration regulation. Besides the general process, this regulation stipulated the excipient manufacturer and supplier would be subject to extended inspection uh, during Bentley review with drug product on a risk assessment basis and or during registration inspection when necessary. In the new release, the drug manufacturing supervision and uh, administration regulation, uh, manufacturers of excipient sell accept quality auditing of drug MH and the supervisory inspection or extended inspection by drug regu uh, regulatory authorities. The other point I would like to highlight here about, about this regulation is the um, site man management uh, file. The manufacturing sites and overseas manufacturing sites of excipients having been uh, approved or passed badly review shall be given an unified code. But the implementation details have not been released yet. Um, the industry will keep an eye on this. Okay, um, let's move on to the next level. There are announcements issued by Train FDA to get the industry on how to implement the review system. Since the release of the implementation documents of the Bentley review system in uh, 2016, except for number 155, the premise document requirement announcement, um, the, uh, uh, all the other announcements issued in the preceding order have not been ab abolished. Food requirements of the implementation rules of the current bottling review system is necessary to comprehensively understand announcements of uh, number 134 and number 146 and number uh, 56. Subsequent files are the adjustment and improvement of the previous one. If the announcement in the later sequence is in case inconsistent with, with, with those in the previous one, the announcements in the later sequence shall prevail. After the overview of existing regulations on excipients administration, let's take a look at the regulatory management requirements of excipients. Firstly, I would like to talk about the scope of bottling review for excipients. It applies to excipients used in both domestic produced drug products and imported drug products. There are two pathways for excipients regulatory compliance application. The first pathway refers to a fall uh, excipients separately then obtain a DMF number, then exhibit manufacturer issues IOA to drug manufacturer for the upcoming battling review with the drug product. This pathway applies to the situation that the exhibit can be used and 
referenced by multiple, multiple uh, drag products. It can uh, realize IP protection. And uh, the excipient manufacturer or owner should have the capability of continuous maintenance for excipient regulatory lifecycle management. Let's go into uh, detail step by step. Firstly, excipient manufacturer or owner compiles dossier per regulation requirement. Then submit dossier to CDE. If it's accepted successfully after com uh, completeness review, the DF num DMF number will be published on CDE website. Then, exhibiting the manufacturer issues LOA to bundle the drug product manufacturer for referring to their dossier when the drug registration. Then, drug manufacturer submits drug registration application to a CDE. The, CD, the CDE will do Bentley review for exhibiting dossier during reviewing bundled drug registration dossier. If the bundled drug product get approval, exhibiting DMF number will be marked as A, which means active in CDE website. However, besides the process above, considering the whole life cycle management, the exhibiting manufacturer should provide timely support in case the physicist light issue during a technical review. And the, in the first quarter of each year, exhibiting the manufacturer should uh, must submit annual reports to the CDE to keep their uh, registration number active. If certain exhibitions have already been successfully re uh, reviewed in the context of the previous drug review, and have maintained the registration number, there may be no need for a new review. However, um, another technical review may be triggered if the CDE says that the use of the exhibit has changed or necessary. When changes happen to uh, happen to exhibit, the exhibit manufacturer sh uh, should notify their customer in a timely manner and submit relevant dossier to CDE. The other pathway refers to compiling this exhibiting information as part of drug registration application dossier that Bentley review with the drug product. Generally, it applies two situations, one for the exhibitions which are listed in the exemption list and for specified use. The other is for the situation which is unable to file due to some uh, special reasons. Uh, for the first situation, some basic information is required to provide the uh, drug manufacturer. Well, for the second situation, the side of dossier per regulation are required. The dossier will be as part of drug registration application dossier, then drug MAH submits drug registration application, bundling review with drug product and get approval finally. For this pathway, there will not be a DF, DMF number assigned to the exhibit. As mentioned just now, there is an exemption list Apart from a uh, sweating agents, flavor spices, pH address addressers, and organic salts, the exemption list for low risk excipients also includes pigments and inks, as well as um, benzene free inks for capsule inscription. The detail uh, the detailed excipient list. Uh, can be found in announcement number 56. I will not go in, go, uh, in more detail for the moment. Here are some requirements on how to use this exemption list. Firstly, for the excipients have been included in the current trend of pharmacopoeia, it should confirm to the requirements therein. For those having not been included in 
the current trend from COPIA it should conform to the require requirements of national food standards or current US, USP, NF, EP, JP, and BP. The, uh, the other excipients should conform to the requirements for medical use. Secondly, here I list the required documents for the excipients exempt from the full DMF filing. They are information of the uh, excipient manufacturer and product basic information and manufacturing process information, product specification, and CFA. Thirdly, train FDA will address the exempt list according to needs. At last, if the excipients in this list is used with functions other than those listed uh, in this list, um, the applicant need to register the excipient according to regulation or provide relevant documents according to the requirements of drug evaluation. Okay. Um, based on history of use and listed in pharmacopoeia or not, excipient filing is classified into four categories as a risk-based classification. This classification has served as the basis for the dossier requirements for excipients. About this classification, there are some keynotes need to pay attention. Okay, what does high risk excipients refer to? Generally, it includes animal or human derived excipients. In excipients for injections, inhalation, preparations, etc. Um, for excipients with the history of use, it means the excipients has been used in approved drug at home and or abroad. And the route of administration is the same. If the excipient exceeds the historical maximum usage of the uh, corresponding route of administration, relevant safety data and other information should be provided. For the scope of drug approval abroad, it only limits to those approved in the US, EU, and Japan. Okay, here just to show just to show the CDE website I mentioned many times during today's presentation. This website is open to public. The published information after DMF those are accepted by uh, CDE successfully um, will include a uh, filing number. We also call it as China DMF, DMF number and product name, company name and address. Uh, uh, the product is domestic manufactured or imported. And packaging size, product grade, um, update date, bundling review status with drug product, and the remark in the last column. In which the status A, active means excipient approved for use in marketed drug, while I inactive means excipients that have not passed the bundle will with the drug. Okay, let's move on to the last part of today's introduction. After we understand the regulatory landscape of excipient, let's summary and recap the responsibility and requirements for excipient manufacturer and user respectively. Um, for excipient manufacturer, they should strictly comply with relevant regulations and ensure product quality. And it has the responsibility of acceptance, inspection, and change notification when it happens. It should comply with appropriate GMP, GDP, and has the capability of continuous support and maintenance during filing and technical review, such as the timely support in case deficiency later issued during drug technical review, 
to uh, facilitate the drug registration process. And also the trend of uh, macopia compliance. All of these aspects are also the necessary regulatory considerations for excipient users to select excipients and their suppliers. Um, as for excipient user, uh, it's also the drug manufacturer. The responsibility includes take the main responsibility for drug quality and ensure that excipients are used in accordance with pharmacopoeia requirements, which means the quality, safety, and function should be uh, comply with the pharmacopoeia requirements. And can, they, they need to conduct, conduct excipient supplier audit. When excipient used are changed, the impact to Jack shall be evaluated or studied and a supplementary application shall be submitted if the quality is affected. The considerations on excipient selection also changed in current regulatory framework. Uh, under the registration system, more attention is paid to whether the selected excipient are approved or not. But now, in the current bottling review system, we need to comprehensive supplier assessment. Uh, as, as we mentioned in the last page, one more thing is closer cooperation than ever before. Communicate and cooperate closely with excipient supplier to ensure a timely and effective support and smooth the progress of a drug registration review and approval. Okay, that's all about what I want to share with you all about exceeding regulatory landscape in China. Should you have any question, please reach out to our Epic China. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here to introduce the Chinese pharmaceutical excipient GMP. I'm Shang Gao from Quality Subcommittee of APEC China. I have eight years of quality assurance experience in drug manufacturing company. Now I'm working in an excipient distribution agent, Rompa, uh, mainly responsible for CDE registration and, uh, and uh, establishing distribution quality management. With the implementation of Chinese bonding review policy, more and more imported excipients enter the Chinese market. And the attention to Chinese excipient GMP has also increased. Last year, IPAC China translated the Chinese excipient GMP to English and put it on website for reference. In this webinar, we just overview this regulation. If you are interested in the full text, you can contact with us. Hope my sharing could increase your understanding of Chinese excipient GMP. Okay, let's start from the agenda. The first part is the Chinese regulation on pharmaceutical excipient manufacturing. The second part is supervision change on pharmaceutical excipient manufacturing. And the third part is overview of Chinese pharmaceutical excipient GMP. Finally, we will have a, a conclusion on, on GMP chapters. Let's start from the first part, Chinese regulation on pharmaceutical excipient manufacturing. The most important uh, law for pharmaceutical industry in China is the Drug Man Man uh, Administration Law of People's Republic of China, which is a fundamental law for drug management. The revised edition uh, in 2019 adheres to uh, Chairman Xi Jinping's four strictest guidelines on drug safety, 
including the strictest standards, the strictest supervision, the strictest punishment, and the strictest accountability to ensure the drug quality and protect public's health. Regarding the excipient quality, now, DAL stipulates that it should meet the requirements now, for pharmaceutical use, which mainly means that the quality, safety, and function of excipients should meet the, the needs of drug products. And MH now, should perform an audit to ensure that the excipient meets the specified requirements. Based uh, on the DAL, China uh, AMPA updates the two provisions. One provision is uh, for uh, drug registration, and the other one uh, is uh, for supervision and administration of drug manufac manufacturing in 2020. Regarding the excipient, China CDE uh, may propose uh, extended uh, uh, inspections during bonding review uh, based on the risk assessment. Excipient manufacturing uh, should comply with the GMP requirement, and the provincial drug authority uh, will perform uh, regular supervision and, uh, uh, and an extended inspection. In July uh, 2019, uh, China CDE issued an announcement uh, of number 56 uh, on the further improving bonding uh, review. Uh, which confirmed the uh, on-site inspection uh, on excipient manufacturing uh, by PDA should be carried out uh, uh, in accordance with GMP uh, for pharmaceutical experts uh, uh, published in year of 26, uh, 2006. After the brief regulation introduction, uh, I think you may have a limited understanding uh, of Chinese laws and regulations. Uh, then we will take a quick look at the supervision change on pharmaceutical excipient manufacturing. In March 26, China NPA issued the Chinese pharmaceutical excipient GMP. It's not mandatory, just as reference for implementation. In August, uh, 2012, because of uh, the adverse effects of excessive uh, chromium in capsule shells, MPA uh, required the new excipients and uh, uh, excipients with high safety risk must be licensed for production and registration. In August uh, uh, 20, 20, uh, 2015, uh, to speed up uh, drug review and approval, uh, LMPA proposed the bonding review policy instead of the separate review and approval for excipients. In August 2016, LMPA issued an announcement on the bonding review of the approval of pharmaceutical excipients and the packaging materials with drug product. It's called the 134 announcement formally uh, implementing the bonding review uh, policy. The excipient manufacturer should meet the corresponding GMP requirements and should be included by the scope of PDA's regular uh, supervision. In July uh, 2019, the announcement of number 146 issued by CDE emphasized that uh, excipients uh, should be manufactured and supervised accordance with uh, GMP requirements. From this timeline, uh, we clearly see, uh, see the changes uh, in the Chinese regulation on excipients uh, supervision. In the future, uh, GMP supervision of excipients manufacturing uh, will become an important uh, topic. On the 10th of this month, Shandong PDA issued the notice on further strengthening quality management of the manufacturing and use of pharmaceutical expense and packaging materials, which proposed 10 requirements for excipient manufacturers, users, and authorities. For excipient manufacturers, 
uh, they should uh, uh, must uh, implement four strict requirements, namely strictly strengthening manufacturing quality management according to GMP, strictly uh, implementing the quality uh, inspections as the registered uh, specification, strictly maintaining the registration information and, and uh, accepting the audits, and strictly Im implementing change control management. Acceptance users you know, should strengthen the three laws that you know, to implement the main responsibility to confirm that acceptance meets the requirements of medical use to complement the corresponding uh, change management uh, of you know, pharmaceutical products. Regional inspection authorities you know, should increase their efforts in three aspects, namely strengthening the routing uh, supervision increasing the supervised sampling inspection and intensifying the punishment for violations of laws and regulations. The next part is overview of Chinese pharmaceutical exhibit GMP now. Because of the time limit uh, uh, of this webinar, now, uh, I just uh, simply summarized the GMP chapters and uh, presented the part of the content Hope you can understand. The Chinese pharmaceutical exhibit GMP now, is composed uh, now, of 13 chapters. The, the framework now, is different from the APEC PQG GMP. Chapter 13 now, is about the definitions uh, of general glossary of terms, so we will not discuss it. Uh, then we will start from chapter 1 of the overview. Chapter one is general provision. The purpose of, uh, of this GMP is to ensure the excipients have proper quality and safety and comply with the, uh, the pharmaceutical use. The scope covers the raw materials and excipients for manufacturing products. As the excipient manufacturing progress, uh, process progresses, the degree of uh, of no, quality assurance no, should increase. Manufacturer no, should determine the point at which no, GMP should be no, applied based on the knowledge of process and the experience no, nature. Chapter two no, is organizations, personnel, and responsibilities. No. Manufacturer no, should set up no, organizations adapting to excipient manufacturing no, and establish procedures no, for personnel, qualification, job responsibilities, uh, training, critical responsibility and authority. The quality management department should be independent of the production uh, department. The person in charge of quality, no, uh, in quality no department no, uh, is responsible for implementing this GMP and periodically no, reporting to the top management on, on confidence no, to the quality management system, including the no, changing customer and the regulatory requirements. The top management should periodically access the quality system to make sure the compliance of this GMP. Chapter three is the no, buildings and the facilities. The core uh, requirement is to prevent no, contamination and the cross contamination. In the infrastructure, the siting, uh, environment control, cleanliness control, air handling, pest control, drainage, washing, and toilet facilities. I just uh, list some uh, uh, some chapters uh, for reference, uh, uh, some articles for reference. Article ten, cleanliness control requirements uh, uh, for buildings and facilities should be established depending on purposes and the characteristics of excipients. Article 12, the air processing system should be designed to prevent cross-contamination. Return air must be not used in areas where large amounts of dust are produced and the cross-contamination are prone to occur. Uh, article number 13, Tem uh, temperature and uh, humidity uh, sh shall be cited and controlled uh, according to the product characteristics and the process requirements. 
Article 50. Uh, adequate light should be provided in all areas. Emergency light needs should be signed according to relevant regulations. Article 70. Measures uh, for preventing cross contamination shall be taken for manufacturing uh, personnel and materials to enter or leave manufacturing workshops. Suitable washing facilities should be equipped for convenient use by employees in the production areas. Chapter 4 is equipment, including design and installation, a material cleaning, lubricant, fixed pipes, calibration, maintenance, and water processing system. For residuals that are difficult to clean, the dedicated equipment should be used. The foot grid of lubricants or on a refrigerant should at least be used where immediate contact cannot be avoided. Names and flow directions of materials in main fixed pipes connecting with equipment should be clearly marked, uh, labeled. Article 25, design, installation, and maintenance of water processing system and supporting systems should make sure the uh, supplied water meets the established specification. Chapter 5 na, is uh, materials. Na. This chapter covers the supply management, uh, material inspection, na, traceability, has the titles, labeling, uh, storage, use of animal tissues or plants, use of streams. For animal tissues, na, um, and the plant or plants are used for manufacturing pharmaceutical gelatins or other excipients. Documents or, or records uh, uh, should be provided to prove that they, are, they haven't been uh, contaminated by harmful chemical substances. For example, animal health uh, certificates and other related documents uh, should be provided and retained for incoming materials of animal or vegetable or vegetable origin. Manufacturer should manage the identification, storage, uh, subculture, and the screening of the biological organisms used in the manufacturing expense. Chapter six now is hygiene which covers the cleaning of buildings, you know, equipment, uh, and the facilities, personnel, and, and the waste disposal. Article uh, 35, you know, hygiene you know, of production, you know, inspection, and the warehousing areas you know, should be maintained. Cleaning you know, procedures of buildings, equipment, containers, and implements you know, should be established according to the air cleanliness you know, level. Cleaning methods and, uh, and procedures in uh, intervals used uh, detergents or disinfectants uh, should be specified. The cleaning methods uh, and the storage places of cleaning tools also must be managed. Article uh, 39, personnel of manufacturing, uh, inspection, maintenance, and warehousing should wear cleaning, uh, wear, uh, wear clean uh, clothing appropriate to the duties performed and should not wear no jewelry. Clothing should, should not gener generate no static electricity and release uh, foreign substances. Clean areas should be entered only by manufacturing op operators of these areas and authorized persons. Article 40, manufacturing personnel uh, should accept a medical examination uh, each year. And the health ar archives uh, should be as, uh, established. Any person uh, shown to have an uh, apparent illness or open lens uh, that may adversely uh, affect the safety or quality of the excipient uh, should be uh, ex excluded, excluded uh, from the direct contact with raw materials 
packaging co components in uh, immediate and uh, uh, finish the excipients until uh, the condition is corrected or determined by competent personnel not to je jeopardize the safety or quality of the excipient. Personnel should be instructed uh, to report uh, to the supervisory personnel uh, any health conditions that may have an adverse effect on excipients. Chapter 7 is validation. A validation protocol should, should be made, uh, including the validation, uh, validation items, methods, and acceptance criteria. The validation should be carried out at the post-validation plan. Validation report should be reviewed and approved. Design qualification, installation qualification, operation qualification, and performance qualification should be carried out for manufacturing buildings, facilities, and equipment. Process validation should be conducted to define and demonstrate effective control of the manufacturing process, including sampling and in-process testing activities. Revalidation of the process should be conducted where evaluation of changes identifies that there is an impact on excipient quality. Validation documents include the validation master plan, validation protocols, validation reports, and validation summaries. Chapter 8 is documents. This chapter covers the establishment of document management system and record control. Article 46, a document management system complying with quality management requirements should be established. Procedures for identification, collection, indexing, filing, storage, security, maintenance, and disposition of control documents should be established and implemented. Article 49, all records should be clear and easy to read. All bench-related records should be kept until at least one year after expiry date of the product. Record archives should be easy to trace and retrieve. The archiving environment should comply with relevant regulations. Article 50, the environment monitoring records of critical sites in aseptic operation areas where pharmaceutical recipients are manufacturing using aseptic techniques. Chapter 9 is manufacturing management, uh, in, in which 21 articles are covered. I just listed some some articles no, that are different from APEC PQG GMP no, for reference. No. Article 55. No. In the gases no, in direct contact with excipients no, should be managed according to the requirements no, for raw material. Article no, 56 and Article 58 is about no, aseptic manufacturing and the sterilization process of non sterile excipients. No. Article 57, if a non sterile excipient is used for, uh, is used for sterile drug products, the process water for fi final separation and refining of, of the excipient should be monitored, and the total bacterial count uh, and endotoxin should be controlled. Article uh, 72, where uh, automated the control systems or other, compli uh, um, other not complicated equipment are used and the requirements not include. Systems and the procedures now show that the equipment and software are, are, are not performing as intended. The procedures uh, for periodic inspection and calibration have been established and followed. Suitable backup systems now for retention 
of uh, systems and records uh, of, uh, are available. Assurance that changes are traceable, are verified and documented, and only made by authorized personnel. Uh, article 72 uh, is uh, actually Article 72 is the same uh, with the uh, is the same as the IPAC PQG GMP. Chapter 10 is quality assurance and quality control, which covers the personnel staffing, origin and the solution management, test record, product release, auto of specification, change control, retained sample, stability test. Uh, for example, no, Article 80, stability test should be documented and record. Tests no, should be carried out periodically no, following the stability test program, which includes the number of lots to be tested uh, uh, each year, uh, the storage conditions, storage containers, the sampling intervals, the, st the stability indicating test methods. Article 81, significant operational changes should be supported by validation results. The effect of the changes should be communicated, should be communicated to both internal and external customers. Chapter 11 is marketing, it covers the distribution and returned products. For example, Article 82, sales records of excipients should be kept. The record should include the excipient name, lot number, delivery site, receiver, delivery quantity, delivery date, so that the product can be retrieved in, uh, when necessary. Chapter 12 is self-inspection and improvement, uh, which covers the self-inspection, uh, continual improvement, and the uh, uh, corrective action, and, uh, and uh, a protect, uh, protective action. Article 86, product quality uh, attributes, customer complaints, uh, process operation parameters, and the process failures uh, should be periodically uh, reviewed and summarized to determine the direction of quality system improvement. So uh, that's uh, the content of the uh, uh, GMP uh, chapter's uh, summary. Actually, uh, after the overview of Chinese exhibiting the GMP chapters, we found some differences uh, from APEC PQG GMP. Uh. So uh, in this uh, 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 presentation, I just list the, the main six differences you know, that are stipulated in Chinese except in GMP, uh, but not in APEC PQG GMP. You know. The first is the scope. You know. Chinese except in GMP you know, uh, covers the animal source, the fermentation of strains, and the aseptic excipients. You know. The infrastructure you know, required you know, emergency lightning. Uh, and identified names and the flow directions of materials in main fixed pipes. Manufacturing uh, personnel uh, should perform, uh, uh, should uh, accept, should accept uh, medical uh, examination each year, and the health archives uh, should be established. The procedures and documentation uh, required for validation activities, including the validation plan. Addition protocol and the report, uh, IQ, PQ, PQ, IQ, OQ, PQ are required for manufacturing the buildings, facilities, and, and the equipment. The stability test uh, should be carried out periodically uh, following the, uh, st uh, the stability test program. The product quality attributes, customer complaints, Process operation parameters and the process failures you know, should be you know, periodically reviewed and summarized. So the uh, above is my uh, is uh, is my sharing today.
Uh, if if you have any comments, no, please uh, email to me no, for discussion. Thanks for your listening. Thank you.